Hi guys, I'm here to talk to you today about safe staffing levels in nursing and how we can promote good patient care and improve staff's well-being and staff retention. I hope you guys can pick up something from my video and take it back to your environment in order to promote well-being and staff retention. So just to give you a bit of background about me, I've worked as a nurse for seven years in a variety of different settings, from the community to hospitals, and now currently working as a substance misuse practitioner in a prison. There's a few things that I've picked up along the way when I've dealt with safe staffing, unsafe staffing levels in the workplace. The first one being that when the levels are unsafe and patient care is compromised, staff wellbeing is compromised, we must report it. We can do that in the form of a day text. We can report it to our line manager or anyone that is senior to ourselves. Because ultimately, if the right people are not aware that things are unsafe, nothing will ever change. The second thing is prioritising care. Now this is very important. We must prioritise the most important care first. And we can split that into categories of low, medium and high priority. And it's thinking about our staff and our skill mix. Who has the best skills, competence, confidence to undertake those tasks? For example, an agency worker who's not been to our environment before, a student nurse who's in her first year, or a new starter, or someone who just isn't competent with a task. We would always make sure that they were supportive and they felt valued and they felt that like they could approach more senior members of staff when they needed us. We would never send them to do a task they were not competent to do because ultimately we want to retain staff. We want our new starters to come back and we want to promote a culture that's welcoming, approachable and caring. So. As well as that, we need to be accountable for ourselves and making sure we get the support that we need in order to reduce sickness absence. And sometimes that's inevitable, we get burnt out. So when we are absent and we need a return to work interview, it's making sure we get that. We get that support, we get those referrals that we might need to occupational health or the wellbeing service because that service is there for you to make you feel supported. So it's making sure you get that dedicated, confidential time with your manager or whoever it is that does your return to work interviews to make sure you're supported. It's also about making sure you get your rest days and making sure that you're not finishing in the early hours of the morning and then you're starting your shift again um, at eight o'clock in the morning when you've only had five hours rest because that's not safe and that's how we make errors and that's how we put our patients at risks. So making sure we're accountable for that. A lot of people think that it's the band five, the band six, the band seven's role to look after our staff, but it's not. It's everybody's responsibility to make our staff feel welcome because that's the only time the only way they're going to want to come back is if everybody is nice to them they feel supported they feel recognized and members of the team are approachable when they have questions so guys i hope you've picked up something from my video that you can take back to the workplace in order to improve patient care patient safety and staff well-being because ultimately this will improve staff retention don't be the ward that no one wants to go back to or the community setting that everybody wants to avoid be the place that everybody says yeah i want to go back there because the staff were kind and the work was difficult but i want to go back there because i felt supported thank you guys take care